Hello, I'm Dragos and in this video we are going to see how we can configure Dogploy to administer also other server. So in the first video we have installed Dogploy and provided the necessary certificate to Dogploy and in this video we are going to see how we can use Dogploy to administer a second node so we can deploy applications or databases on the second node if we want to do that you may want to do that because maybe you don't want to have everything in the same vps think of for instance in case you are having some monitoring applications that uh, we want to use to monitor the main uh, vps server you don't want to have them in the same server in case the server crashes to not have the monitoring uh, alerts and uh, other than that maybe you have different applications and in case one it's uh, DDoS you want to not crash all the application in there although you can set limits in docker for uh, all the applications but yeah in this video we're going to see how we can configure uh, a second server and uh, you can add with this method as many server as you want in case you would want to install doplo you can uh, search for the first video i will add the link to the description so in here we have doplo and for this we are going to use the remote servers and uh, we are going to add a remote server so what this will do it will go and install the packages needed on the second server and you can administer it uh, from here from this interface we're going to see some of the details of this so what i'm gonna do i will gonna go in hasner you can go and create the second server in any infrastructure you want you can go to DigitalOcean, you can go to vulture linode and so on but for this i will just go in the hasner i will choose the smallest shape possible in here to show you how it's working i will choose the falkenstein or let's also go with Helsinki for this test because let's say something happened with this data center maybe you want to have another data center in here that will have the applications up and running on that VPS server and we are going to choose the key to log into the server that I've added in here you can also do without that and I will choose the firewall for this and in here I will put the dogploy deploy uh, let's say two like this and i will hit create and buy now and right now the server it will start to be created and uh, we are gonna need this ip address and what we should do for this because this is internet facing you need to have it internet facing because you would want to put domains in here and have access to the applications through it and uh, you will need to follow again the same uh, path as we did for when we are starting Doploy because in here we're gonna need to update everything we're gonna need to have a user for this that is not uh, the root one to connect we're going to add it uh, to the sudo list and make it uh, accessible without the password we're going to copy the ssh key from root and then we're going to modify the ssh config but for ssh config we're going to do a different thing we're not going to limit the permit root login to no for everything we are going just to add the match user root in here and we will tell it permit root login yes and we are going to put the allow user root at ip address so in here we are going to add the ip address of the main node where we have Dogploy installed so we can um, log into the second node from the Dogploy installation and then you continue with the rest of the things to restart ssh you can put the client alive interval in here and you add the swap and in then you can configure crowdsec also in here to protect it with a firewall and then you should have everything configured and again you need all of these things to protect your server and i'm not going to do it right now because i already did them in a previous uh, video so you just follow that video and i will add it in this article 
and I'll put the link into the video description. I will add the details for matching the user where it was. It wasn't in here, so I will put uh, details with the code in here that you can uh, do just to tell to not limit all the root login and just match the IP address that you want for for this. So in here, let's go and add our uh, server. So I will copy the IP address of this. So in Doppler in here, the first thing that we are going to do is to add an SSH key. So basically, if you are going to check the SSH key in here, we are going to need to add an SSH key. And how what this SSH key is doing, it's basically, this is how the servers are communicated between each other to install packages and see the details. So I will add the SSH key in here. I will generate a RSA SSH key for this and I will put the name in here. I'll put the name like uh, VPS connection. Yeah, to connect. Okay, and I will just create this key. Okay, and I mean, this key it has like a private key that this server it will use and the public one that we are going to go and add it in the authorized key in the second server that we've created but we're going to do this after we're going to remote servers and I will hit create uh, a server in here and here I will put uh, the deploy to server yeah second server for a description in here you choose the SSH key that we are going to use. You are going to add in here an IP address. The port is 22 because we didn't change it and the username should be root. So you can only use root for this type of connections. This is what they are recommending. And in here you see that you can use whatever you want uh, as a server. Okay, and let's hit create. So right now the server it's added and is not configured. And in here we are going to go and see that you have these things in here with actions to open the terminal and uh, check some things we are going to check after we are setting the server. And in here you can go and choose setup server. And in here what they will tell you first is to log into the server and add this key into the root. So um, this server can communicate uh, with each other and install everything because in the deployment we'll have some scripts to deploy. And what I will gonna do, I will just copy this command from here and I will log into the server. Let me first copy the IP address like this. And in here I will open a terminal. So this is the terminal for this. And I will do SSH minus E IDRSA is my key. And I will put the IP address like this. Yes. So right now I am logging with root. Again, you would want to do the configuration from this article to be sure that also this server is secured. Okay. And then we are going to go and copy this command. And we are just going to go in the terminal and we are going to run it. And in here, if we are just going to cat the authorized keys, you're going to see that we have two keys in here. The one it's my key and the other one it's the one that uh, we've just added, the deploy one. Okay. And right now we have the public keys added and the next thing that we're going to do is to go in here and test to see that this connection is working. So. Again, if you click this, you have the terminal and right now the terminal and the server can be accessed also from here. So in here you see that you are connected and if you, for instance, you do a, a top, you will going to see the details. So four gigabytes of RAM and everything uh, it's working with the key and let's go and set up the server and we're going to hit the deployment. And right now we are going to do set up server in here, confirm. And this will gonna start a script that it will install the packages needed by Doploy to work on this server. So on this server you will not have it. You will not have uh, Doploy installed with everything. You have 
traffic installed, you will have Docker, you have some um, images added in there. So yeah, to have uh, everything uh, working with this deploy first installation, and then we're going to deploy something to see how it's working and if it's working as expected. And also with this second node, you will not have the monitoring part. So if we're going to check when we're going to deploy something, you are going to have a monitoring for the Docker and you will not have this. Okay. Setting up the Docker swarm. Traffic is installed. Nix packs. Rail pack it's installed. So right now the server it's set up. And you have in here some validation which will tell you that it has everything needed. The network is created, it's swarm it's initialized, air clone. And yeah, you have also here some security recommendations for SSH for fail to ban, but you're gonna use CrowdSec, the firewall to install, which you are going to follow the other article, you will have this. So right now you have everything installed in there and in here, Docker PS, it will only have the traffic running right now. Okay, traffic image. And what we are going to do next is to go to project and we are going to set up a project to see how it's working. So in here I will create an application, I will call it test, where we are going to go into a create service and in here you have multiple services that you can uh, create, we are going to see them in the next video, some of these. And then here we have templates for instance and in templates we have a lot of self-hosted applications that can be installed. And for this, we're gonna use uh, Uptime Kuma. So basically, Uptime Kuma, it's an application that will help you monitor your website to see if it's up and if it's not, it will send you a notification. I are gonna hit create. And then here you have, you see that you have the Docploy and Docploy 2. And I'm gonna choose the Docploy 2. This is the second node that we've created. I will hit confirm. And in here you can go and uh, change some of the things that you want in here for the configuration of Docker Compose. Environment var uh, variables, you will have a domain added by default in here. Backups, schedule, block volumes, logs, advanced. Okay, and in here if we are gonna hit deploy, this will gonna go and deploy everything on our second node. So right now the image it will be pulled and the Aptaikuma will be installed. I will just uh, show you that this is working and some of the things that you have in there. So it's pulling the image on the second node right now. So this is working exactly like it will work in, uh, in the same administration area. Okay, so right now this should be up and running and if we are going to go to domains, and if we're going to go to this domain, you are going to see that this is working. So you can go and configure also your own, um, uh, your, own, your own DNS if you want for this, pointing to this domain. But right now you have everything working on the second node. And if you are going to run in here, for instance, Docker image, you will see that you will have the second image, Docker PS. In here, you will gonna see that you have also the Aptai Kuma, like the 3001 port. This one, it is Aptai Kuma. So, yeah, uh, you have everything working. And the one thing that you are not gonna have with this, if we're going to check the project, and I have in here my app, you'll have a monitoring tab. You'll not have this monitoring tab in the in the installation because of resource usage. But again, right now, if we're going to go to remote servers, in here you have also, for instance, view actions. So you have some action for the traffic to view logs, to reload 
to enable the dashboard port mapping and in here for the space you can clean space and so on you can activate the daily docker cleanup and uh, you have the options to show the traffic file system with the traffic configuration on the second node you show the docker containers in here you again you have the options to see the docker containers in here with the logs and configuration you can open a terminal to the decor container so you can do your administration tasks directly into this uh, into the main uh, docploy if you're going to do that and you can uh, add as many servers as you want right now and right now you can go and uh, use the second server to deploy your application also in there and have one interface to configure everything so yeah, like this you are using uh, Docploy also to add a second server in case you like what you have simply done, don't forget to like and subscribe and we are going to see next how you are going to deploy to applications to monitor your infrastructure and uh, receive alerts in case something is happening. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.